Yo, I kind of want to wrap this episode up pretty quickly because I'm actually in the middle of a heated auction uh, on Instagram right now. I'm trying to sell this beautifully rare, uh, I guess it's a conjoined Sour Patch Kid. I've never seen one like it. That came out of the bag and uh, having people, I don't know, there's kind of a bid war going on on Instagram right now. So yeah, let's get the show on the road. Uh, leave me a comment right now. What would you give? to have this incredibly rare, incredibly, it's its artistic in a way, honestly. Sour Patch Kid, leave me that comment. It is 1.44 p.m., let's get down to business. Alright, probably one of my more bizarre intros, but during my last Saturday live stream, um, I got a very interesting question about why Seiko seems to get more love than Citizen. Now, I have a, I have a theory about this, okay? So just bear with me. Uh, Seiko and Citizen both have a ton of die-hard followers, and I'm not going to argue that one watchmaker makes better products than the other one, because I don't think that's the case. However, there is a reason why Seiko seems to be more prominent within the enthusiast community. So I'm gonna make this nice and simple for both of us, okay? I got a bunch of bullet points here. Number one, Seiko has done more with mechanical movements. Guys, whether you like it or not, uh, Seiko definitely has more watches currently in their roster with mechanical movements and, uh, you know, watch enthusiasts like that. Which brings me to my next point. Seiko actually makes more watches targeted to watch collectors. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just take a look at all of their limited editions. Okay, Seiko makes a ton of limited editions, and let's be honest, the only people clamoring to buy those, other than the scalpers, uh, are avid watch collectors. And the final reason I think Seiko gets more appeal within the watch collector community than Citizen is because Seiko experiments with a ton of really innovative complications within multiple product lines, okay? So we all know, when we think of complication and Seiko, spring drive that's that's what comes to mind right but it's not just the spring drive movement it's not just the spring drive movement being allocated in their higher end grand seikos there are spring drives now within the pro specs line there's spring drives within the presage line and it's not like seikos turn their back on other interesting functions like gps or uh you know solar powered watches or their kind of hybrid and by hybrid i meant kinetic okay they're kinetic watches like the sun 065 Really cool shrouded diver GMT complication, uh, just nice. So for these reasons, I think Seiko definitely targets their products more towards watch enthusiasts. Now this isn't to say Citizen isn't a competent watchmaker in their own right. And I've made some bullet points about them. Citizen has a larger consumer base outside the watch world than Seiko does. I mean, let's face it, Citizen marketed heavily and still markets heavily their eco drive watches the average joe doesn't really care about what's going on in the watch world uh, the average joe doesn't necessarily care about complications or innovation the average joe doesn't really care about mechanical movements oh it pains me to say that i'm just kidding i'm wearing a uh, battery powered timex iron man love this watch the average joe just wants to wear a watch that will work that you can rely on maybe has some interesting bells and whistles, but for the most part, they don't care. And guess what? That's what an eco drive is, right? It's always on, gets power from natural or artificial light sources, bada bing, bada boom, you don't gotta baby it. It's just a watch you can rely on. And that's why more people that aren't really watch enthusiasts go to Citizen. And here's the final bullet point I'll give to Citizen. Citizen isn't worried about where they stand within the watch collector market because they've acquired other watchmakers that are very heavily targeted within the watch enthusiast world. I'm talking about Bulova, FC, right? Frederic Constant, and finally, Alpina. And those three watchmakers that are under Citizen have a ton of watch enthusiast appeal. Look at all the complications, all the amazing watchmaking that Frederic Constant is doing. Look at all the awesome, really complicated, sporty watches that Alpina has. And look at the beautiful titanium two-tone 50th anniversary Bulova Lunar Pilot. Gorgeous. These are things watch collectors absolutely love. And so Citizen is doing just fine in that respect. Now I guess to wrap things up, I would say 
comparing Seiko and Citizen, it, it was fun. This was a fun, interesting thing to write up for you guys, but I think a more accurate comparison would be Citizen versus Casio. But you'll just have to wait for that episode. All right, guys, what do you think about that? Where do you think Citizen versus Seiko, you know, where do they stand within the watch collector community? Where do they stand, where do they stand, excuse me, outside the watch collector community? And what do you think about Citizen versus another watchmaker like Casio, right? I think those two people are more on kind of even footing. Uh, but leave me a comment below. Again, comments really do help me out in the algorithm. And guys, I just want to bring something up. We get a few hundred viewers during the Saturday morning Q&A every week, uh, and then we get like a few thousand more uh, during the playback recording, but I would love to see each and every one of you there during the live show because it is an absolute madhouse. It is so fun, and you don't have to be a member to join up for the live show. Uh, I read as many questions as I can. Uh, again, every 11 a.m., 11 to 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and uh, yeah, we do it for like an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours. It's insane and uh, it just gets crazier and crazier as time goes on. Usually de devolves into like, I don't know, arguing about anime and junk food. It it's just, it's crazy, but I'd love to see you there. So please join in. Check out all the affiliate links in the description below when you shop using those links, you help me out a bunch. Uh, check out my personal website, thetimetellershop.com. Not only is that the number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches, we also have monthly t-shirt designs. Uh, and those are very, very popular. We even have a really cool death metal 3 a.m. The witching hour. Uh, I would, uh, sh guys, pick those t-shirts up. We have new designs coming out every month. And I'd love to see you wear one. All right, guys, and that's it. I will see you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>